Now, it's probably fair to say that one of the more surprising front runners at this stage in the campaign is Penny Mordaunt, certainly a relatively unfamiliar face outside Westminster at least. She came second on Thursday with 83 votes from MPs. One of those backing her campaign is Litchfield Conservative MP Michael Fabricant. Mr Fabricant, good morning. Borodar to you. Borada, thank you for joining us. Uh, your woman, Penny Mordaunt, she looked like the insurgent midweek last week, but she's had a tough few days. And I refer to that Conservative Home survey of the membership published yesterday. That's now got uh, Kemi Badenoch as a, as a clear front runner among the members where uh, your candidate was the, the front runner a few days ago. Mm, that's right, Paul. I mean, they've been banging on, haven't they, about the trans issue, which uh, you would think that's the only matter which concerns British people at the moment. And that's the issue which I think is uh, sort of affecting uh, Conservative members at the moment. Personally, I'm a very liberal sort of Conservative and uh, I'm actually all for live, live and let live. Well, it's on the front page of the Sunday Times and the Mail on Sunday today, and it's all about uh, gender self-ID, isn't it? And it came up in the debate, Kemi Badenoch suggesting that Penny Mordaunt had supported the idea of self-identification, so uh, lessening the process that somebody needs to go through in terms of medical assessment uh, before uh, transitioning. Penny Mordaunt denied that was the case. She is also denying... Uh, her campaign is denying reports in the papers this morning, um, which, uh, for example, the Sunday Times suggests that documents appear to undermine Penny Mordaunt's claims that she never supported gender self-ID. Um, why do you think this has blown up as, as such an issue? I think it's I think it's blown up as such an issue simply because they want to get Penny. Um, there has been lots of dirty tricks been going on over the last few weeks, and uh, it's like any election campaign. You see it in the Labour Party and even the Lib Dems too. Uh, when you're talking about the leadership, um, I think it's been a huge surprise to everyone that Penny Mordaunt is so successful. As you said earlier on, when you were talking to Faye, she got 83 points in the last round. Tom Tugendhat came bottom with 32 points. I think the interesting thing is that many people suspect that those 32 points will probably, if he drops out, transfer across to Penny because uh, Tom Tugendhat supporters tend to take the view... the sort of line you were taking in your questioning with Faye, namely that... Um, you know, Rishi is in some way tainted. Maybe that's not the right way to use, but word to use, but uh, tainted by his connection with Boris Johnson in the administration. Or perhaps more tainted, if you like. I keep using that word, it's probably not right, but probably more tainted by virtue of the fact that when he says, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z, people say, well, if that's the case, you've been in the Treasury for years, why didn't you do it then? The other side of that coin is lack of experience, isn't it? Rishi Sunak has held high office. Uh, he's been Chancellor for a significant period of time at an incredibly difficult time for the economy. Liz Truss has been a cabinet minister, served at cabinet level for years. Penny Mordaunt just doesn't have that experience. And this is a contest to be prime minister. Mm. Well, I mean, you're right in that, uh, you know, she hasn't had that number of years in government. She was Secretary of State, of course, for Defence for a little while until uh, Boris sacked her. But that was only because she was backing Jeremy Hunt. Uh, she was Minister for Equalities, as we know, hence this uh, debate on trans issues. But you know yeah, what? Ju pretty junior roles, though, not running one of the big departments. Well, MOD is a pretty big department, but look, you know, Tony Blair. She wasn't Secretary of State for long, though, was she? Tony Blair didn't hold any role whatsoever in government. And some would say that up until the Iraq war, he was a pretty good PM. He was certainly popular. Yeah, people make a similar argument for when David Cameron came into the Tory leadership, don't they? But of course, Blair and Cameron were being elected as by their parties to lead the opposition and then go to a general election. This is to go straight in as Prime Minister. It's not the time for a, a newcomer. 
Well, you know, you're making a fair point. At the uh, current stage, it's going to be up to the members of the party to decide. First of all, it's going to be, as you know, the MPs who will whittle it down to the final two. And then it'll be the members of the party, about 180,000 people, to decide whether or not, you know, they want Rishi Sunak or the other person, whoever it turns out to be. One of the other big policy issues of the week was tax. Uh, Penny Mordaunt, uh, she plans to raise income tax thresholds, so effectively put more money in people's pockets, and cut VAT on fuel. That is what Rishi Sunak calls fairy tale economics, isn't it? I think I think what he was referring to was some of the promises being made by Liz Truss, which were really quite extensive. Yeah, Liz Truss wants to cut the N, uh, reverse the NI rise and stop the corporation tax yeah, rise, which, which are even more expensive. But you know, Rishi would say that, wouldn't he? And uh, you know, <laughs> he's fighting his campaign, and I'm at the moment supporting, and I'm supporting uh, Penny Morden. But I would say this about uh, Rishi: you know, you quite rightly, or was it Faye, pointed out how much money he has targeted at people, but it hasn't done anything to help inflation. I was on holiday four weeks ago or so in France for a weekend. And I was filling up my hire car with petrol and I noticed that on the pump it said every, in French of course, <laughs> every 15 cents in your litre is being refunded to you by the government of France. In other words, it was cost, uh, reducing the cost of petrol and diesel at the pump. And that reduces inflation. And it also shows people that the government is actually doing something. And but I wish in a way... There, the concern though, sorry to interrupt, but wouldn't yeah. the concern be you get a short-term cut in fuel prices, but the broader impact, the longer-term impact is it's more money going into the economy. It's heating up demand more broadly, and that just fuels inflation in the, in the medium term. Well, you're doing that, of course, if you're funding people directly in the way that Rishi's doing. So, I mean, the advantage of the way Rishi's doing it, of course, is that he's targeting the right people, the people who need the money most. And, and of course, when I was getting the pump, I was getting the benefit of the French government, and I'm a UK citizen. So I, I, I see that argument. But no... I, I don't agree with you. Whichever way you put money into the economy, whether it be by funding people directly or reducing prices, it, it, it fuels inflation to some degree. But what really is inflationary is when you've got rail strikes. And I have some sympathy, if I'm honest with you, with some of the rail workers who've been on a pay freeze. But they're saying costs are going up and up and up. If you can actually reduce the costs by, as I say, reducing VAT on uh, fuel, or somehow subsidising, I'm not quite sure of the mechanism how you would do it, uh, reduce the cost of food in supermarkets. Of course, there's no VAT, there's no tax on food in this country. Um, but if you could somehow reduce those costs, actually, it would be reducing inflation. And before we finish, let's, let's just go back to where we started and the rough and tumble of the campaign, the alleged dark arts that are going on. You've been an MP since 1992. You've seen a few of these leadership contests. Is this one particularly nasty behind the scenes? I think it is, actually. I think it is. I, I don't remember it being... I think it's because... Um, we all thought, you know, there would be an obvious front runner and nobody would be anywhere else, you know, in, in the race. And yet suddenly you've got people like Kemi Badenoch, like Penny Morden and, and Liz Truss, of course, and others coming up very, very close behind. And I think it's rattled some of the supporters of, uh, of Rishi and indeed some of the other campaigners who thought they had a clear run at it. Michael Fabricant, Conservative MP for Litchfield and supporter of Penny Mordant, thank you for joining us.